Hey, what's up everybody, Isaac here, coming to you with another New World video, and we got a special one for you today, and what do you see? We do not have a shield on, we have a great sword, and we have our trusty old hatchet on, and does that mean that this isn't a tanking video? Nope, it does not mean that. This is indeed a tanking video, but this is going to be more of an advanced tanking video. But there is a way you could adjust it and apply it to yourself if you're still new to this, just getting started, or maybe you're kind of halfway there. And yeah, let's jump right into it. So right off at the bat, the first thing that I am going to show you, 100 con. 249 strength and 166 dex like ultimately i would prefer if it was 300 strength and then the rest into dex but just my armor is all dex eventually hopefully i'm gonna find a strength set but for now we're working with what i got so either way dex applies to both of these weapons Strength is going to make the hatchet scale better, but with the greatsword, either one's going to scale just as well. But obviously, the only benefit of going 300 strength is, well, 300 strength would help the hatchet scale a little bit better damage. But we would get grit on everything, so that would be the bonus. Grit on all of our basic attacks. So that would be the bonus of going 300 strength instead of split up so much but what is this all about well this is going to be about doing a kind of a speed run not totally speed run in the sense that we're skipping stuff because we are doing a normal clear in the genesis but we still finish sub 20 minutes and that comes much in part to having very strong dps a very good healer Really good communication, a team that has the run completely and totally down, and it does help having a tank that, well, one of my skills, sometimes I can hit up to 9k plus on the third strike, and that is going to be my cross cut. So sometimes, if I hit an enemy with my back on the very third strike, I can hit up to 9k. So, you have a tank. That's hitting 9k shots. Well, you're gonna help your team a little bit. Speed right through things. But that doesn't come without its dangers for one. Obviously, having low con means I'm gonna be a lot more squishy. Two, using my greatsword and using that specific ability, it's going to put me into onslaught. When I go into Onslaught, I'm going to have my outgoing damage increased by 15%, but I'm also going to take increased 15% damage. So when you're the tank and anytime you get an increase of 15% damage, that can be a sketchy situation. Add on top of that, having only 100 con, well, things can get hairy very fast, and that's why it's important that you have a team that has the rundown and things don't get too out of line. I am running heavy armor, so obviously that helps a decent amount. Got all the gems, and I do have the nature protection in my amulet. But not having my shield equipped, since I do not have a sword, and obviously if I put my shield on, it's not gonna help me since the sword is not being slotted. So I don't have that extra nature ward from my shield. So losing a little bit of damage resistance there. But I'm going to walk you through the build. We'll show you our armor just in case you missed our other videos. But you should go back and check those out. So we got 26 decks, Angry Earth Ward, and Blight Resistance. So very, very basic gear. Obviously the Blight Resistance is nice because you don't have to waste slotting any blight, blight, pot, blight pots into your bar, you know, I can make use of all four of these bars doing something else. But if I didn't have it, it wouldn't be the end of the day to swap out blight resistance for the ward or for the mana pot. And 
Yeah, I could use a different earring that I don't need to have the healthy toast on there. I could get regenerating instead, but we just ran with it. So that's because we didn't need to have any blight pots in our bar. And worst case scenario, we get into a situation we could open our backpack and pop a pot if I didn't have the blight resist. And I still wanted to keep everything on my bar. But anyways, let's jump right into the build. So I don't re recommend this build in, you know, a random group finder public match. One, unless you're extremely, you know, unless you're you know really experienced and two unless you vet the group really well and three you definitely could make it more viable and you know less sketchy if you use this build use the same concepts but crank the con way up and play it that way just to get used to it first but we are going to show you our build First things first, we'll show you the hatchet. It's the same old same that we've been running. And just in case, ooh, I actually have the wrong hatchet in here for some reason. There's the one. So I have been running without refreshing torrent, but I did finally craft myself a hatchet with refreshing torrent so we got the refreshing torrent every hit of raging torrent reduces all hatchet cooldowns by 8.5 percent that's going to be real nice real important real handy and the biggest reason for that is well one it does help us do more damage when we are using the hatchet we can get our rending throw up faster and all that but the big thing is we can do a taunt switch back to our great sword then switch back to our hatchet we can hit something with the Raging Torrent and we're going to have our taunt right back off of cooldown. In addition, we're taking Rending Throw and then we're taking the ability to do the Aim to Throws that comes in really handy. Once you get used to it, using the Aim Throw as a tank, it's hard to go back. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it getting started off because it's hard to get used to at first not being able to block while you have your hatchet out. And you might go to block, but you can't, and then you end up getting killed. So definitely recommend playing with it a little bit here and there, trying to get used to it. But maybe not your first couple of times tanking. But, so yeah, that is our hatchet build that we are running with. Now let's jump into the greatsword. So we are doing a little bit of a combo build. A little bit defiance, a little bit of onslaught. So that means we have the ability to go into defiant stance. And when we go into defiant stance, we have damage taken reduced by 15%. And outgoing damage reduced by 15%. So obviously we don't like the reduced damage outgoing, but we do very much love the damage taken being reduced by 15%. And being that we have so low of con, we are still going to do some pretty decent damage. Even though we're losing 15% damage for a tank, we're still going to output decent damage when we are in the defiant slot. But when we are in this defiant stance, we're not in it to do damage. We would rather be pulling out our hatchet at that point to do damage, but we're going to go into defiant stance when we need to for certain times just to tank certain mobs, certain parts of the dungeon. But other than that, we're going to try and go into onslaught stance so we can output some heavy damage. And then we're going to go back into defiant stance when we need to, you know, recover. And all of that good stuff. So the skills. Calamity counter. This is a very nice skill as a tank. So what's this going to do for you? It's going to give you the ability to, uh, to block by using an ability instead of by right clicking. And this comes in very handy. This is key to this build because we're going to use it in certain places and 
we're going to have to time our cooldowns properly. So really important to have a group that is communicating well so you're not forced to use it in the wrong places. And then you go down one counter attack, inflicts bleeding for 6 seconds for each power level. Each stack deals 5% weapon damage every second. So, you know, when you're low con and you're stacking up those bleeds, it's going to start to add up. Counter attack, crit chance increased by 25%. In Onslaught stance, the counter attack gains an additional 25% critical chance. And then in Defiant stance, the counter attack heals for 20% of its damage. So there's going to be different times when we go use this ability when we're going to be in each of these stances. So there's two things that really, really make this build. And that is taking this skill and this skill. I guess passive is what people call these taking these two passives and these are the two passives that allow us to very easily switch between onslaught stance and defiant stance so by taking this passive block for two seconds causing you to enter into defiant stance so you're in onslaught you're causing all kinds of damage then all of a sudden you get yourself into a sketchy situation and naturally you're going to want to right click anyways. You block and then after you block for two seconds, you're going to automatically go into defiant stance. See, when our sword's pointed forward, that means we're in defiant stance and that is going to help us negate incoming damage. So anytime we get into a tricky situation, we block and it automatically is going to end up putting us into that defined stance as long as we block for two seconds or more but what was the other one i mentioned well let's take a look at it so this one here enter onslaught stance by hitting with a charged heavy attack and we're typically going to be dishing out heavy attacks as it is so every time we hit an enemy with a heavy attack a fully charged heavy attack we are then going to enter into the onslaught and it doesn't enter it now because we're not in combat but if we hit an enemy with it that would put us into the onslaught stance and you'd know it because our sword would be dragging behind us instead of pointing forward so that's how it's easy to know if you're wondering you know we're just in neutral stance right now but if we were in defiant stance you would notice that our sword would be sticking out in front of us and I guess it doesn't want to go into it now, maybe because we're not being attacked. But if the sword is dragging behind us, then you know that we are in the onslaught stance. That's the stance that we are going to do more damage, but also take more damage. So that's going to be pretty important to know. So what is the rest of this stuff here? Well, this here, or in Rupture, it's going to be our taunt. But let's read through the rest of it. Stab the ground, send out a shockwave with a 4 meter radius that deals 120% weapon damage, gain 8% fortify. So obviously that fortify is going to be good. We're all already going to be low con, not a lot of HP. So we get fortify for 5 seconds for each full hit. So typically when we use it, you know, obviously there's going to be times when we hit just one enemy, but... A lot of times we're going to use it when we're surrounded by enemies and we get a nice big stack of 24% fortify. It's very significant, but it also generates threat. Very important as the tank and it has grit. So that's going to allow you to make sure you get it off and nothing interrupts you while you are using this attack. And you enter defiant stance when this ability ends so very important because you're causing threat you're doing a taunt so as soon as you hit with this there's a good chance that you're going to get instantly attacked so it's good that it puts us into defiant stance where we have a 15 percent reduction in damage being taken so very strong skill to have for this build we go down, cleanse two debuffs after using Roaring Rupture. So, obviously, very strong, very important. If you got a bleed on you, if you got a poison on you, it's going to be very nice to get rid of those. Obviously, there's certain mechanics 
within the mutation specifically that cannot be cleansed but that's just the way it goes and the one i skipped here in defiant stance the shockwave pushes foes outward and onslaught stance the shockwave pulls foes three meters towards you i just feel like this is not necessary and i'd almost just as soon not have it because in defiant stance typically as a tank we would want to pull the foes towards us because we're not, you know, as a tank, we're trying to gather things typically, not spread them apart. Granted that in this situation, it would be okay since we are light con pushing, you know, the enemies away from us. Just a little bit of a safeguard being so low con, it'd be okay. But in onslaught stance, the shockwave pulls foes three more meters towards you. Which would probably be okay because it gathers it gathers them to us and then allows us to melt them really fast. But I just feel like it's not really a necessary passive. And there's other good ones that I can't afford to miss out on. But we do take the intimidating roar. The shockwave applies a 10% weaken for 10 seconds on hit. Additionally, after a successful hit, become uninterruptible for 5 seconds. So... Both parts of that very, very important. So we're already super low con, pretty squishy for a tank. So applying 10% weaken is going to be a significant help to us. It's going to make sure that the enemies do 10% less damage to us. And the uninterruptible, that's always a very, very good thing. If we're not getting knocked around, that means we can take control of the situation. So what are the passives we're taking on this side? After gaining Defiant Stance, the next damage taken within 5 seconds is reduced by 25%. So this is incredibly important as part of this build. We're already going to be fairly squishy. So when we go into Defiant Stance, it's going to be for a reason. And that's because we're expecting to take damage in within the very near future. So reducing that damage by 25%, it's going to be a lifesaver. So the next perk, base damage is increased by 3% for each greatsword buff on you. So we're going to be constantly having buffs up. So, And we are trying to be a dps -E tank. So the more damage output. So anything that helps us do more damage, anything that helps us mitigate incoming damage is going to be extremely, extremely helpful on this build. Charged heavy attacks have grit and inflict bleeding for 6 seconds, dealing 5% weapon damage every second. So we're going to be fairly low con, doing pretty high damage for a tank. So adding additional large stacks of bleed, that's going to be very nice. And we already talked about this one, blocking for 2 seconds causes us to enter into divine stance. And it says you must be in combat for this effect to activate. So... I demonstrated earlier and it did actually enter into it one time not sure why maybe because I used one of my skills that's probably why because I used the skill that's why I went into that stance so what is the other passive we're using here reduce stamina damage by 50% when blocking attacks after raising your guard or with guard point inflicts a 5% ren for 10 seconds against melee attackers so that means when we're in guard point and we're doing the heavy attacks, anything that hits us, it's going to get a stack of Ren, which is obviously helpful. We're trying to be very dps -y, so if we give something Ren, we're going to be able to do even that much more damage yet. And we are taking the ultimate on the right side of the tree under the defiance tree undying defiance heal for five percent of the damage from attacks attacking within three seconds of blocking heals for 15 percent of the damage dealt instead so this is going to be a pretty important one i feel so even though it's not so much of an offensive one we are going to be doing heavy damage so that's going to allow us to heal back up really fast you know obviously five percent that's not like something super huge but being the tank, we're going to be getting healed, but we get this additional 5% buff on all the damage we do. And like I said, we're going to be doing some massive amounts of damage in certain situations. So 5% of a massive amount of damage ends up being 
a reasonable amount of health. And that covers the whole right side. What are we taking on the left side? So we're going to take crosscut. This skill does damage. It does heavy damage. I think the highest number I've seen was I hit something for like 9,600 damage on the third hit. So if you read that through, you're going to see the first hit, 110% weapon damage. Second hit, 130% weapon damage. And the third hit, 160% weapon damage. So significant amounts of damage. And we take it all the way down. Gain grit while performing crosscut. Base damage of the final strike is increased by 100% if the target is below 50% health. So... You're already doing 160% weapon damage, and then an extra 100%. Yeah, this skill is going to do some heavy, heavy damage. So that's why we are taking it. And heavy blade, charged heavy attacks have 15% armor penetration. It's going to let us do more damage. And we already talked about that one. Then crush the weak, critical hit chance is increased by 10%. When attacking foes with an active debuff. And we're constantly going to be hitting foes with debuffs. So, you know, whether we hit them with our hatchet or, you know, with the rending throw. Whether we give them some kind of debuff. Heat with our bleeds, whatever it might be. Rend with our greatsword. And then step and strike after dodging. Gain a 10% in power for the next 3 hits within 10 seconds. This effect only occurs when in combat. Attacks empowered by this effect restore 10 stamina on hit. So one thing about this is quick charge. When we are in the onslaught damage, quick charge heavy attacks charge twice as fast but consume 10 stamina each. So obviously... Attacks costing stamina, that's not really the most ideal thing when you're a tank, but having this is going to help us out. Attacks empowered by this effect restore 10 stamina on hit, consume 10 stamina. So, while we are hitting something well empowered from this specific passive, it's going to offset that 10 stamina cost. So very nice to have. And that's the main reason I take this one. I would probably take something else than this if I didn't have to in order to get down here. But I feel like this is a pretty important part of this build. So that is the reason I take this one. Mainly to get down here. So that is the build that I am rocking for this specific build. So in my last video I talked about tanking with full defiant side and I told you it was my opinion that that is not the most effective way to tank with greatsword. However, I do think it is a good way to get yourself acclimated with greatsword. You know your very first time tanking with it, you know whether it's you're using it as your offhand or you want to use it as your main weapon. Just going full defiance side is going to be a safe option to get you acclimated with greatsword. And more than just a safe option, it's a viable option. But this, there is a difference between viable and effective and the most absolute effective. So it's going to depend on your goals for sure. But I think this is an effective, safer way to get started with. But ultimately, going full right defiant side, I don't think is the move long term. I think you're going to want to get some practice in and then advance to a build more like this. A hybrid where you can switch back and forth between defiant stance and onslaught. So that covers the build. And I'll show you my great sword. So this great sword you are going to be able to... Farm. I don't remember exactly where it drops, but go ahead look it up on newworlddatabase.info or any of those websites and it'll tell you where you can get it. But it is a named item and it's definitely a pretty good one. So Angry Earthbane, obviously 
very, very important to have if you're trying to do heavy DPS. Chain fire, I always love chain fire because it's going to trigger off of all the mobs that are close to you. So, and as a tank, you're trying to grab aggro on things. So the more things you're doing damage to with your sword that's got its taunt in it, well, the more aggro you're going to draw. So that's just, there's more than one way to draw aggro. Obviously, you can taunt things, but you can do lots of damage to them as well. And that's going to help you draw aggro. So then vicious, nothing wrong with that. Every time you do a crit hit, we're going to do an additional 12% damage. So, very, very strong. Great sword for Angry Earth. If you need yourself an Angry Earth, great sword. So, I guess that covers the build. Any questions, go ahead and drop them. You know, we'll just go and show you what our prep would be. We're taking carrot cake just because that's what we are taking reality i probably should go and buy a maybe i even have a nope i have a 40 oh i do have a 40 strength food so i guess i screwed up i should have taken no that doesn't make sense because i still can't get rid of the 166 decks so either way we're stuck with that until i upgrade there is a place that i can farm a strength helmet I've actually tried quite a few times without any luck, but I'll show you on the map really quick where that is. It's an Angry Earth Strength Helmet, so it would be very good to get. Excellent, excellent uh, piece of gear for a tank to get. A Strength Angry Earth Ward Helmet, so I'd strongly recommend you go and try it out. There's an alligator right here. You go and farm him. He drops it. I personally haven't had any luck getting it to drop yet. so. That's what I have to do is farm it some more and solve my dilemma of being stuck on this just one shot. You know, if I do this build, I end up at 249 strength. If I do my 200 con build, I end up at 149 strength. Oh, the struggles. It's not the end of the world, but let's show you what it does. So, stamina regen is faster while performing basic attacks with a melee weapon. So, obviously, as a tank or even as a DPS... Faster stamina regen is going to be super helpful. So we are missing out on a pretty big bonus here by missing that one stinking attribute. So it does get pretty important maximizing your attributes on your gear. But that doesn't mean you still cannot easily gold. So you can see my gear is... Especially my armor pieces, they are so far from optimized. But I'm still able to tank with 100 con and do sub 20 minute runs in Genesis. Normal runs, not speed runs. So you do not need the most ultimate gear in order to be successful. So some people were concerned about it that one of my other videos I was tanking you know, doing these guys, and I was tanking with some really, really strong equipment. They didn't think that I should be doing that with really, really strong equipment, but the same concepts apply whether your equipment is super strong or not that I'm giving you for tanking. So you could take the same concept if you want and apply it to yourself, even if your gear is even worse than mine, which would be hard to do other than my jewelry. It's not crazy good. Or it's, I mean, it is decent. I have mostly because of this, the nature protection. This one could be a little bit spendy to get. Or if you do have jewel crafting up to 200, just go and craft yourself one. A nature protection, that's really all you need. If you could get nature protection and health, you know, that would be awesome. So can you scarab this? Probably can. If you can scarab nature protection and health, that is all you need. So heck, go craft one. Go give a crafter the mats and give them an extra thousand gold and there you go you're all set it's not that difficult to be honest with you so just about anyone if you really want to you can farm up the mats to get yourself a nature protection amulet or any of the other ones that you need so as long as you have the nature ward gear, this stuff is doable even if you don't have the most crazy gear. But like I said, 
If you want to try and get used to this, but you're not as experienced, or you're not running with as experienced of players, go ahead, run everything the same, except, except crank your con up to 300, and you're going to be good to go. So get used to it at a you know safer pace, and then slowly work yourself on up. But yeah, before I ramble on anymore, we're going to walk you through the run. So here we go. And we are off. So, if you're going to be doing these more advanced speedruns, this actually isn't really even a speedrun in the sense that we do do a full clear. We don't skip the boss, but communication is key. So, a couple little mistakes can make things go south very fast. So, make sure everyone in the group, you know, they know what's going on. They know what the plan is, and they are, you know, in tune with the run. So first part, real basic, we just go in and we taunt everything with our big AoE hatchet berserk and AoE everything down, then we call this archer in as soon as we can. Get one of your DPS to go and collect the, the thing that opens up the door, whatever that's called, losing the uh, track right now, but just AoE this guy down, have your DPS go and collect that thing to open the door right away so he can get back up here and help you as soon as possible so he can grab his drop from this boss. See, there he is, he's back, he can grab his drop if he wants, and we move right along. So, just nuke this little guy and straight on to the boss. Oh, you got a spear hatchet now? So this guy is going to be pretty basic too. We're going to go in with our hatchet I think first. Typically, not sure what I did this time, but yeah. Usually I'll go in with my hatchet, hit him with some rending throw, hit him with a taunt right off the bat. And we get started with our hatchet. And when we get the chance, we're going to switch to our great sword, drop off some big DPS. Anytime we feel a little bit threatened, we are definitely going to go back to our hatchet. But the thing is... Regardless if we're using our greatsword or our hatchet, we're going to be doing some really good damage. So it's really important that you understand the difference between your defiant stance and your onslaught stance. Because one is going to allow you to absorb more damage, the other one's going to make you take more damage. So you get into a tough situation, make sure you are calling out your defiant stance. You do that by using one of your defiant skills or you do that by blocking for two seconds. So pretty basic, you get into a troublesome situation, just go ahead and block. It's going to put you into the defiant stance after two seconds. So pretty basic, just nuke that guy down. On to the next part, we are going to call the archer up and we are going to call two, uh, or the little mobs up that are going to allow our DPS to go ahead and start looting while we kill these guys here. So. The DPS, he's going to go and grab the node on the left, then he's going to sneak around behind and grab the node weight on the right side. So we just nuke these guys down. I try my best to keep the aggro on this archer to make sure he's targeting me. Really helpful if your healer has fortifying sacred ground as, uh, yeah, that archer. He drops that rain of arrows and he can take out light DPS pretty pretty handily without having a little bit of extra protection from some fortify. So we grab the aggro of those first two mobs and then we go somewhere that we can taunt everything all at once. So we get the aggro on everything. I back out of the silent zone because if I get hit by all of those mobs without being able to pull up my abilities it could put me in some trouble so we just nuke everything down go into hatchet mode and hatch it away so this part can actually be pretty hairy if there's a little bit of miscommunication you know i've definitely gone down on this spot a couple of times just because the group didn't have it you know they didn't understand uh how we were planning to run it and the heal doesn't get dropped on me and i cannot survive for very long without a shield at 100 con with all of those little mobs hitting me so here i'm trying to get switched over to my hammer that cooldown can be pretty annoying but it's okay because my teammates they're able to solo this soldier without me no problem but as soon as my hammer is ready i go ahead and grab it 
And then, once again, it's kind of important that you as the tank, you know where the soldier is going to spawn in. Because it's going to be your job to grab his aggro. And usually you're going to solo him while the DPS go and kill the rest of the adds. But sometimes the DPS were just jumping on the soldier and killing him right away too. Especially this first round, it doesn't matter because it's just a prowler that spawns in. So you can nuke the soldier and then you can all go kill the prowler. But, see, it's kind of annoying sometimes this soldier, he will go and chase after the tree even after you get him super low. But, I guess that's my fault for not getting the second, having the second taunt ready. But, you see right there, communication is key. So, anytime you can have people that are going to talk with you, it's going to help. And, you know, I let him know the soldier, he's going to get to the tree if I don't have help interrupting him because my shockwave was on cooldown. So I didn't have any way to interrupt him. So I got a little help from somebody's grav well, and we are good to go. Nuke him down, and then we are ready for the next soldier. Go ahead, hit him with our knockdown. First soldier on the right, second soldier on the left, third soldier back on the right. So... We are just trying to focus on taking out this soldier. And hopefully our team goes and kills the archer first. But then from that point on, you can see a couple of the team are working on the archer. And between me and another DPS, we're actually able to take the soldier out really fast too. So when you are a tank rolled for high DPS, it's pretty helpful because you're not just sitting there you know trying to buy time you're actually doing heavy damage as well so you are killing the soldier as well you're not just sitting there blocking to hold his aggro you are actually trying to kill things too you're not just there to be a big battering ram you're there to be the battering ram but you're also there to put out some good dps so making really good time moving right along so this guy, once again, you know, my opening on all the bosses tends to be the same. Hit him with my rending throw on my hatchet. Taunt him with my berserk if it's up and ready. You could see it was on cooldown, but it was ready to go soon. So kept my hatchet out and just was ready to taunt him as soon as I'm able to. Then I just hack away with my greatsword for the most part. But either way, whether I got my greatsword out, whether I got my hatchet out, I'm going to be doing some pretty heavy damage. So this shaman, you just skip him every time. He is not going to follow you, so just run right on past him. And this soldier, make sure you hug this little wall with your left shoulder. If you touch the wall with your shoulder, he is not going to aggro. So this part, just nuke this, nuke this archer down wherever he is. It's nice if you can get up the stairs before somebody grabs that node. Because if they do grab the node, the archer is going to go after them. But either way, it's not that big of a deal. You just nuke it down and you push right along on your way. So yeah, we've been chugging through really fast. But yeah. We are going okay. all yeah, we the way the in. We just need to be conscious to make sure we have our defy death uh, save. So yeah, really nice if you're going all in that you got a bunch of players with hatchets. And if things do get hairy at the end, it buys you a little bit extra time to stay alive while the ads are on you and you can just burn them right down. And I think with... Uh, So pretty basic, I am trying to grab my greatsword. So yeah, we're just talking about one of our uh, our DPS here, Breezy. He had a mage set, that's all he had, and that's what we were working with. We were still able to all in him when he had his mage set, but it was a little bit trickier. But he did find a light con DPS hatchet set, and we were able to burn him so much faster. So it is key in Genesis. Your build, it's all about heavy DPS. If you can have 
three light DPS that are anywhere from 5 to 50 con. That is key. So at this point, just DPSing. Hatchet if you want, great sword if you want, just make sure you stay alive. So at this point, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can just stay on the boss or or else as you know the tank. If you're worried a little bit, you can grab a taunt on any ads that come in. Grab their aggro and pull them away from your teammates. But in reality, if you can, it is better if you just stay on the boss and continue DPSing him right on down. So what we do here to save time, we're going to call both bosses into the middle. Just pull out your hatchet, chuck it at that boss, it'll drag him right in. And so I come in here and I taunt this guy, and I'm going to try and get the taunt on the other guy with my greatsword. So you can see, got my taunt off with my greatsword, got my taunt off with my hatchet, so they should both be focusing me. Sitting inside this heal, or with all of our life steal and all that, we have no problem surviving. So we got our ring with lifesteal, you know, our hatchet, if we got our berserk, we got some natural healing there. And we got some self-healing abilities on our greatsword, so... We're pretty safe almost anywhere in this dungeon. Even at 100 con with heavy armor, we're pretty safe to just hatchet away, face tank everything. One thing that is kind of... Realistically, you could have two people grab it here. It's not gonna, well, I guess yeah, I'm talking about right. two people grabbing the torch. I don't think it's actually possible anymore. You used to be able to have two guys with a torch at one time, I'm pretty sure. But it sounds people like people two people can't grab it anymore because yeah, I think I we think tested so. it. So, I was thinking you could, but I think the, the guys here. tried it and I was wrong. But So, what we do here, somebody grabs it. And they open both doors on the other side, then they open this door. But one thing we've been having happen, somebody bugs out and they can't open the door. So they have to go back and re-grab. Super, super annoying and it causes you problems on your speed runs. Or sometimes it can even cause you your gold run if it's a regular, regular run. I have actually lost gold runs because the doors wouldn't open we had to go back and re-grab the torch because the guy bugged out and these curtains wouldn't open so what i do here i just go and grab the taunt on both of these guys and then i come and sit on this mage and dps him down what i actually prefer to do you could see i had the taunt on the archer then I go and try and hide, I try to line of sight him. I get out of his line of sight on the opposite side of this boss. And then it focus, kind of uh, makes the archer come down to me. And then we can stack them that way. So anytime you can stack them both up, you're going to help save yourself a few seconds. Every second saved is huge when you're trying to do these speed runs. And this isn't the total speed run, as in we come and get this boss where people are trying to do you know, a real true speed run, they're gonna skip this boss. But it is fun to see just how fast of a time you can get while well, full clearing. So obviously we're not full clearing every single ad, but we're doing what most people would call a normal clear. Get everything, you know, you try to get every single gatherable, you get every boss kill you need, you get every mob kill you need. So from that point of view, it is a full clear. We're not skipping a named just to make our run faster, but we're trying to see how fast of a run we can while meeting every single requirement. And in that way, it's going to help us get the biggest score we think we possibly can. So you can actually either go left or right. Most people go left, but it's actually not a bad idea to go right because you save the time of extra steps, and you can definitely nuke that archer down pretty fast as well. Here we just call both of these guys over. It's best if you do it as the tank because that way they're both going to come for you. As soon as they get here, try and aggro them. Hit them both. Hit them both with your taunt. But yeah, these soldiers are nuts. If you watched one of my other videos, or if you watched my other videos, I don't know, was it my first Genesis run? The soldier with the slam, he knocked the guy from like 10 meters away. So something's a little bit broken there. 
But right along. Hit this guy with my taunt for my great sword. Switch to my hatchet since he stuns me just to be safe in case he, you know, takes all my health. I am going to be saved with my life saved from my hatchet. So always keep that in mind. You get yourself into a dangerous situation, just pull out your hatchet. You're not at a loss for having your hatchet out because you're still going to do heavy damage even with your hatchet out. So we are buzzing right along. This next part, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Well, we first got to take out this archer no big deal just buzz them on down but this next part with these two bosses a lot of people like to take them out one at a time personally I like to stack them when we can if you got a team that's comfortable with stacking that is my preference but a lot of people don't like to do it but either way it's not a huge time difference because when you have huge DPS you do buzz them down super fast but you can see I'm gonna throw my hatchet at the soldier and we're gonna come stack on the archer melee will come to the range but the range won't come to the melee so you can see once I got both their aggro I am blocking to go into the defiance stance and then I use my uh, blocking ability and we just go right on to DPSing. Do have my hatchet out at this point just because it is a little bit of a hairy situation. You know, you can take a lot of damage really, really fast in this part when you got the archer focused on you and the soldier focused on you. One or the other by itself, I can just face tank that damage even with the great sword. But just to play it safe. So there is one thing, there is one of those gatherables back where the soldier is, so have a DPS go back and grab that gatherable, and you're going to be good, you're going to get all your gatherables, you're going to get all of your named kills, and just like that, we hit everything, got all of the multipliers, and we're still getting a sub 20 run. So, love to hear, what is your fastest run while clearing out everything? So... I'd even love to get even faster than this. I think we hit 19 and a half minutes, 1929 if I recall right, but this part it can get a little bit tricky. You're at 50 or you're at 100 con. This guy he hits pretty hard, so you know, there's a couple times where I'm doing this boss and the heal doesn't get dropped on me, it gets dropped on the DPS, but your health starts going down really like right there that heal it definitely should be on the tank because i'm only a hundred con and i'm getting hit by him and my health goes down fast you know as long as i got my hatchet out we're good until my death defy hits but once that hits well you're gonna have to try and play things a little bit safer so at this place where this guy goes underneath ground you're actually better to stack up on top of each other and just block instead of running because if you run it's gonna take longer because he travels underneath ground and he goes to what maybe the furthest person away so you can see right there my death defy went off so I gotta start playing it safe for a minute but right back pulling out the hatchet just hatcheting away you know his little hits I can handle those but if he does catch me with a heavy attack he can take all of my health away so once again we're all staying close up we're ready to block in case he tries to spike us because he can one shot pretty much any one of us with his spike so right here we're gonna try and burn as much damage as we can out of him and then i run away my death def my death defy it already went off and i wasn't sure if it was back up yet so sometimes i will stay on the stay on the boss through that and use my death defy but especially once I'm a hundred con and pretty pretty easy to get killed and I am the one holding the boss's aggro usually I avoid it with the speed run just to be safe don't want to be getting knocked so we're just buying a little bit of extra time waiting for the next guy to get in but here comes the big scream attack. Rock is very far away, but we get there with just a little bit of time to spare.
And at this point, it's basic. We're there. We beat it. Awesome run. So, love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments. Have you tried just tanking with only a great sword yet? What's your fastest time? Whether you went and got the full, you know, did you get the side boss or... I think my fastest time speed running it, skipping the one extra side boss, was like 16 minutes or so. But definitely should be able to beat that by the end of this week. So that really is going to cover it for this run. Hope you learned something and appreciate all the attention on my videos lately. Love you guys and we will catch you on the next one.